Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rito and thank you so much for stopping by to watch my video. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're an old subscriber, welcome back. So I am trying this new series on my channel. This idea came from my last video that I posted just as we moved to Denmark. Um, I was showing people what our apartment looks like. And so many people really loved the idea of me showing that because it gave them an idea what they could find in Copenhagen. But also I had so many questions on that, but I didn't take it too seriously but now i'm thinking i'm gonna test run this series of living in denmark and i'm gonna tackle different um topics that i feel like people might want to know about so if you have any questions or you have any ideas of what you would like to know you can drop them in the comment section and i will either tackle them as per category or i would make another video i will try to make videos where i answer those individual questions as much as i can with as much information as i can give you guys but in today's video this is not a negative video this is me just kind of i just believe that if you are thinking of doing anything if you want to take a decision i think that the best thing the best uh situation for you is to know the good and the bad and and so that you can make your decision with every information at your disposal and you know that you're making the best decision for yourself. I think this point is for the people who are not uh, Europeans, who are Africans like me, like us, who moved, uh, who are moving to, who are looking to move to Europe. Uh, for a lot of people who are moving to Scandinavian country, moving to Europe, some, one of your goals or some of your goals might be that, okay, I want to move here, get a better life. And also, I would like to have maybe to be able to get permanent residency, to be able to get my passport changed or something like that. You want to have an additional citizenship for your child, for yourself. Uh, that's where I'm saying that Denmark might not be the place for you if you are looking to have that in a in a short time because it takes a long the the, the time that it takes for you to get that is very very long the process is very very long for a foreigner especially coming from africa so if that is one of your big reasons for wanting to move to denmark that is not this might not be the place for you you are better off moving to the uk you are better off moving to canada you are better off moving to a few other sweden which is like next to us here you are actually better off moving to sweden also for that uh, if that's what's on your mind, if you're thinking of that whole citizenship and getting like uh, legal papers to remain here and have that stay here. Uh, the good part though is that even if you don't have those like permanent residence and it's just because you are here legally and you're working and paying your taxes and not getting into trouble you get a lot of advantages here that kind of makes you forget that you are not a citizen to be honest with you but for the most part in the long run in the long run there are loads of us who come from africa who would love to have the option uh not that we're trying to abandon our our passports from nigeria or something but we would love to have the option of having a second citizenship for our children for ourselves for whatever reason you want maybe for education to have access to better education to have access to better health care and all those things denmark might not be the place for you because the process is hella long you have to be here for at least five years to six years before you can even think of permanent residency and you have you also have to know the language to even think of that and then the passport is like ahead so it's a lot of process to go through to get there meanwhile someone who might have moved to the uk within that time they are trying to get a permanent residency someone who have moved to the uk or canada for example must have gotten their pr or even just trying to apply to get their passport by then so if that's what's on your mind like i said maybe denmark is not for you maybe you should do a little more research about countries who where you would actually get that that so the first uh point i would like to point out which is probably one of the most important one is you do not if you're the kind of person that does not like cold weather denmark is probably not the place for you because it's not just cold it's really windy it's really wet a lot of times it rains a lot when it does get warm and gets sunny it's beautiful you just want to be out all the time i don't know if it's because it's beautiful that i want to be out all the time or it's just because we miss the fact that it's not, that we miss the sun and also we just know that it can be taken away any day so you just kind of have to have like all the sun and all the bright days that you can get when it is sunny but just keep in mind that this is a place with a special kind of weather you cannot 
take the high, really, really high taxes. Now, it has its advantages. I'm not going to lie. High taxes has its own advantages. And that's going to be in another video when we're talking about all the positives about Denmark. Um, but uh, the taxes are high and it's just a gift, like it's just a fact. If you're a student, you pay significantly lower tax and then depending on what uh, your salary is, for example, you pay your taxes depending on that too. But even at that stage, even with that, it's still a high tax. For example, I was paying 36 to, I think between 30, I think about 36 to 37 percent of my salary was going to tax. And uh, my husband, who is like in, who is in a higher um, tax bracket than me, was paying all the way up to 45, I think, um, 45, I think. 45% of his salary was going into taxes. So uh, the, tax are, the taxes are pretty high, but uh, even though yeah, it goes into your healthcare, it goes into education and all that stuff, uh, sometimes some people just don't, would rather have all their money to themselves and then they can figure out a way to pay for all those things. They would rather have money at hand and be able to save up and be able to you know do that than for them to have to pay these high taxes. Like my friend once said at work, she was like, I don't even get sick that much, so I'm not even using the healthcare system, but you never know. So yeah, the taxes are pretty, pretty, are pretty high. The taxes on your salary, the tax on, on things you buy in the market. For example, I was living in Budapest before I moved to Denmark, and I was comparing the prices of uh, what stuff costs, for example, in Zara compared to Denmark, and I noticed that I was paying um, significantly. I was paying a significant amount higher than I was paying in, for example, Budapest, because I mean Hungary has a lower VAT uh, value added tax. So, but because here there is a higher value added tax, I think it's about twenty five percent, and so uh, you, so you if you convert it to like what you would pay for example in hungary where the standard of living is lower significantly lower and of course their tax rate is lower you would be paying a lot more than you would have paid in a place like hungary for example so i'm just using hungary because that's where i've lived and that's where i i can tell you like about the standard of living is pretty high rents are significantly higher than most places but it also depends on what city in Denmark you are living in. If you are living in the bigger cities, for example, we live in Copenhagen, so rents are pretty, pretty high. And with the inflation too right now, is it infl infl inflation? Uh, I think it's inflation. Please, if you're an economist, tell me what it is. Inflation or recession? Inflation with how the economy is going right now. Rents are pretty high. Where every year, we've, in the last year, we've had to, they've had to increase our rent by like 4%. So yeah, rents are pretty high. Um, also for, the, for what I would get with what we pay in our apartment, we have a three bedroom apartment with one bathroom, uh, open kitchen and our sitting area. Our building is pretty new, it's well, it's a pretty new building. Uh, it's in a nice and quiet area in Copenhagen and we pay somewhere, and I don't want to give you like a, a particular price, but. We pay somewhere between, uh, at the end of the day, between 2,000 euros and 2,300 euros for a three bedroom. Compared to London, like my husband who used to live in London, he said that that's literally not something you're gonna get in London. And even if you get, it's gonna be so shitty and so small. And I get that. But coming from Hungary, it was such a blow for me because I was living, I was, with this amount, I would have a two bathroom or three bathroom with like four rooms in a house and everything. And I know now in Hungary also rent are a bit higher, but it's still not as high as here. So I'm just comparing the two, you know? So yeah, the standard of living is high. Uh, what you pay for groceries and like different stuff is just a bit higher. Social, li social life is a lot more expensive. You pay a lot more for like, like stuff just in general in Copenhagen as you would pay in some a lot of Europe honestly you like your bright sunny days or should I say just bright days in general it gets really really dark really really fast let me at like 4 p.m. it feels like it's already 7 o'clock in the evening it gets really really dark really fast sometimes the whole day looks like it's 
6 p.m. in the evening or it's like 7 p.m. in the evening or it just looks gloomy and dark and just depressing to be honest most of the time i mean in the summertime we have those days where you have longer brighter days and and shorter um and shorter days that are darker but for the most part of it from like i want to say from like october or yeah from like october up until like april and that's like almost half of the year it gets really really dark really really fast and does not get bright really fast so you can be sleeping at like 7 in the morning or 8 and thinking it's actually still like 4 a.m and you could be late if you don't check your time i used to get up to get to work early earlier than my husband i used to have to be at work by 8 a.m sometimes and i would leave the house by 7 just so i'm at work at 8 a.m and by the time i i, I get out of my house it looks like I'm leaving. It looks like it's like 4 a.m. in the morning, even though everywhere is busy because people are trying to get to work. It definitely looks like that. Now, compared to Hungary, where I used to live, we also have those days in the winter time where it gets dark early, but not as dark as Denmark, really. And around those that time, like 7 that I'm talking about that I'm getting to work, I also used to have to get to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I would leave home literally at 6.45 because then in Budapest I was working really out of town. And it was not as dark as here, so it gets really dark for a long time. It can get really depressing for people because there is not a lot of activities to do outside because it's also cold and everybody just wants to be at home. So you just have to figure out, if, you're, if, if you think that you really, really want to come here, you have to figure out a way to keep, to fill your days with things that interest you or else you might get really, really depressed anyway these are the reasons that i feel like people might not want to move to denmark or i feel like i would say if you are if you kind of identify with any of these points you might not want to be in denmark but overall these are my points and you make your decision again i'm not saying don't come here i'm just saying these are things that you should keep in mind so thank you so much for listening and if you got made it to this part of the video thank you and i will see you in my next video bye